Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech, and Windows 10 is apparently not the last version of Windows. Windows 11 has now been officially announced, and in this video we're gonna go over some of the major talking points from the launch event. Uh, I'm gonna give you my two cents, obviously, in the video, and as always, you can leave your opinions and join the conversation in the comments below. So, let's get started. The new start menu, with its simple, clean, and beautiful centered layout, is optimized so you can find what you need quickly. Ever since its introduction in Windows 95, the start menu has almost always been either a headlining feature or at least a major talking point for new versions of Windows, for better or for worse. When you think about it, clicking on start is probably going to be the first thing most people do when they first boot up a new version of Windows. And it's almost like psychologically they need to change the start menu in order to warrant the jump to a new version, right? Because the average users don't really care about the under the hood changes, as long as they can effectively do whatever they need to do without crashes, stuttering, error messages, etc. So you need to give them certain visual cues that imply that this is something new. But you also need to give them at least some novel functionality that would say, and besides the fact that it's new, here's why it's also better. Start utilizes the cloud and the power of M365 so you can see your recent files, no matter what platform or device you were viewing them on earlier. In fact, I was looking at this power and simplicity document on my phone this morning. And now with just one tap, I'm right back into it. Okay, so this seems pretty cool. And this is them covering the functionality aspect of the changes that they've made. But here's the thing, given the fact that this is called the recommended section or whatever, and by the way, it seems to take up almost one half of the entire menu, uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if I ever saw an ad or two in it. Just saying. We put start at the center. It puts you at the center. It's what you need closer to you, simplified. It's cloud powered to serve you the docs and the apps you need. It's what you need, all right? See what they did there? They said it two times in like less than 10 seconds. But anyway, they're pushing it towards the center in order for it to match their new theme of Windows being at the center of whatever it is that you do, which is something that the CEO talked about extensively in an interview for the Wall Street Journal. It's a psychological thing, just like them repeatedly telling you, this is something you need, all right? You need it. You don't really. Luckily, if you don't, and you'd much rather have your start button sitting where God intended it to be, you will be able to move it back. So even if you think that this is horrible, what they did with the start button, there's really no point in dwelling on this because, you know, it's optional. Also, they're pushing it to the center in order to make it a bit more accessible to touchscreen devices, but I'll get to that a bit later. Right now, I want to focus on this whole Windows at the center theme. Personal computing requires choice, and we need to nurture and grow our own agency over computing itself. We want to remove the barriers that too often exist today and provide real choice and connection. We need to be empowered to choose the applications we run, the content we consume, the people we connect to, and even how we allocate our own attention. Microsoft is in a position in which they need to compete with the likes of Apple and Google. And it's not just about competing in the hardware and software departments anymore. It hasn't been for quite some time, actually. What they really need to compete with are their ecosystems. And that, as things currently stand, is not the easiest of tasks. So what does Microsoft do? Android apps coming to Windows. And I mean coming to Windows. In theory, this actually sounds kind of genius. If you can't get Windows apps to compete with Android apps, get the Android apps to run on Windows, natively. Imagine if sometime down the road they managed to do the same thing with iOS apps, which is pretty far-fetched, by the way. But regardless, now you start to get the picture on what they're going for with this whole Windows being at the center of things talk. Windows isn't just an operating system. It's a platform for platform creators. If your platform can't compete with, okay, I'm gonna try to say this in one go. If your platform can't compete with other platforms, right? Make your platform a platform for other platforms. And they're discoverable through the Microsoft Store using the Amazon App Store. And we use Intel Bridge technology to bring it to life so it's just seamless and smooth now, the big question here is how well will these apps integrate into Windows 11, right? What will the user experience be like? It could be great. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine, at least for a certain number of people, but it's sort of hard to imagine that Google wouldn't somehow entice the developers into making better apps for Android or Chrome OS. But then again, this is just one of those things that we're gonna have to wait and see. As of now, it sounds really good. The last time Microsoft tried to center Windows around touchscreen devices, uh, yeah, it didn't work out too well. So, 
This time they're playing it much safer. And you'll see what I'm talking about as soon as you detach your keyboard. It's the same beautiful centered taskbar, just with a touch more space between the icons. We've added bigger touch targets and subtle visual cues to make resizing and moving windows easier. This is most likely the biggest functional reason why they've moved the start button and menu to the center, because in UX design for touch, it's a known fact that the smaller a button is, obviously, the harder it is to tap precisely, but especially if it's placed in a corner. Now, they've also added gestures and they've given windows the ability to stack on top of each other when you rotate the screen. Uh, look, I don't think this is gonna get any iPad users to say, shit, I wanna switch over to Windows, but for the people who use convertible Microsoft devices, I don't know really, I don't have too much experience using Windows with touchscreen, so I don't really know what the needs are, but I guess it's gonna be fine. Games can look better than ever on Windows 11 thanks to Auto HDR. We introduced this tech in our Xbox consoles and got an incredible response from creators and players. What this means is that if you have an HDR capable monitor, on Windows 11 you should see an increased range of color and luminance in video games, so more details in the very light and very dark areas of any particular scene. A number of studios already develop games with HDR in mind, so this is going to use machine learning to target games that are only available in SDR. With top performing PCs running Windows 11, new games can load faster than ever thanks to a breakthrough technology called direct storage which we first pioneered in the xbox series x and s so with direct storage games will be able to load assets directly from an nvme ssd without bogging down the cpu which effectively equates to much shorter load times in video games as well as the ability to quickly load visual elements like draw distances and different textures however this does come with a pair of hefty system requirements. So you will need to have an NVMe SSD with at least one terabyte of storage space, and you're also gonna need a DirectX Ultimate compatible GPU, which unfortunately means nothing lower than the RTX 2000 and 3000 series. The product is faster, waking from sleep is faster, Windows Hello is faster, browsing on Edge is faster, browsing on any browser is faster, the product uses less energy which gives you more battery life. So these are all general improvements that you'd expect from a new OS. One thing that I think is worth emphasizing here is the fact that they're switching to a once a year major update cycle and the updates should be 40% smaller. Just to mention some other new features, Snap Layouts offer a bunch of Snap presets for multiple windows, which is useful. Snap Groups, on the other hand, is a feature that memorizes those layouts and restores them in the exact position they were prior to being minimized to the taskbar. And this even works if the layouts are being displayed on a separate monitor, which you unplug and then plug back in. It just snaps everything back in place. You can also have different wallpapers on separate desktops. There's Teams, because they need to compete with Zoom, I guess. Also, the taskbar now features a button for a widgets menu, which kind of reminds me of the thing on Windows 10. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it on screen so you know what I'm talking about. The minimum system requirements for Windows 11 are as follows. You're gonna need Secure Boot and TPM 2.0, which reportedly is already leading to trusted platform modules being scalped, so... <sighs> But if you have a newer CPU, you might be able to bypass this requirement by enabling a firmware type of TPM in the BIOS, but we're gonna have to wait and see how this plays out when the update starts rolling out. Windows 11 should be a free update for Windows 10 users, hopefully a truly optional one this time around. 11, 11, 11, 11! <laughs>